Hey folks, I'm Chris Thornton, this is Not School, and in this video I want to talk about a hero of mine, Alman Stroger, an undertaker from New York who, in trying to settle a grudge, actually changed the entire world. Born in upstate New York in 1839, not a whole lot is known about Alman Stroger's life. He served in the American Civil War on the side of the Union, and for those of you who aren't Americans, the Union were the good guys, they weren't the southern slave owners, so it's okay, we can like him. He also worked for a while as a school teacher, like me, so we can like him even more. What we do know is that by 1888 he was working as an undertaker. Now this may have been in Topeka, or it may have been in El Dorado, which are both in Kansas, or it could possibly have been in Kansas City, which, for reasons which I don't really understand, is actually in Missouri. Either way, he was working as an undertaker and he decided to invest in a telephone line so that he could get phone calls so that people could book him to be an undertaker for their funerals. At the time, if you wanted to make a phone call, you picked up the handset and spoke to a centrally located operator. These operators would then physically plug a wire from one connection to another on a switchboard in front of them to connect your line to the line of the person you wanted to call. Small towns might have a few of these operators, but large cities would have to have dozens and dozens of operators to connect all the people wanting to make phone calls. Now this is where fact and fiction get a little bit difficult to separate in Stroger's story, but I'm going to tell you the most common version of the story, and it's personally the one I like the most. You see, Stroger was expecting to be getting a load of phone calls asking him to be the undertaker for different funerals, and yet once he'd got the phone line, he didn't seem to be getting many phone calls. If anything, he was getting hardly any phone calls and it was a waste of an investment. And he wasn't sure what was going on. Why was he getting so few calls? Why weren't people using this new technology to get in touch with him? And then he did a little bit of digging and it turned out that there was another undertaker in town. And this other undertaker in town was doing fine business, he was getting plenty of phone calls. And the undertaker was married to the operator of the telephone switchboard. Stroger was incensed, and I can understand why. He felt that every time anyone picked up the phone and spoke to the operator and asked to be put through to an undertaker, that operator was putting them through to her husband rather than Stroger. He felt that it was an unfair system. And so he did something remarkable. He decided, even though he had basically no knowledge of telecommunication systems, he decided he was going to change this. He decided he was going to solve this problem. He decided that people should be able to choose who they spoke to. People should choose who they were going to call, not the operator. And that's where things got amazing. Stroger set about designing a system to replace the telephone operator, and with the help of some relatives, just three years later he filed a patent for it. And it's a pretty amazing thing to see what he actually designed. This is the original patent application. For those of you who don't understand what you're looking at, let me explain. The incoming line, the line making the phone call, connects to the central shaft and along a connector which can reach out to any one of the connections around the side. These connections are arranged in a semicircle, and the central connector can spin on its axis and connect to any one of them. Now that alone would have been a pretty good system, but the Stroger switch takes it a step further, because not only can it pivot around and connect to any one of those different outputs, but it can also move up and down. And so it can connect to any one of the outputs on that first turn, and then it can move up and it can connect to any one of the outputs on the next one and so on. So, in a simple telephone system you'd have outputs numbered 0 to 9, and then you'd have another set, and another set, and another set, and so you'd have 10 sets altogether from 0 to 9 going vertically as well. So you could make any two-digit combination of numbers from 00, 0 to 99 using this system. The combination of digits was controlled electrically by a series of pulses sent from the phone of the person dialing the number. But what if you had a phone number that was longer than two digits? What if there were more than 100 people with telephones that you might want to call? Well, there was a very simple solution. 
you just add more stroger switches. After the first stroger switch, you add another, which adds another two digits. And after that one, you can add another, which adds another two digits, and so on. This is a British telephone exchange from the 1980s, where you can see that we've got one stroger switch after another, after another, allowing people to dial quite long phone numbers. Almost a hundred years after he'd invented it, and in a completely different world to the one he lived in, the stroger switch was still being used. So Stroger's work was still being used almost a century after he developed it, and it completely revolutionised the entire telecommunications system of the planet. That alone is enough to qualify him as a hero. But there's an even more interesting step to this, and it comes with the outbreak of World War II. You see, the Germans were encrypting all the messages which they were sending around to all their different troops right across Europe. They were broadcasting them as Morse code, which is essentially a series of dots and dashes which translate to a series of uh, letters of the alphabet. But if everyone else knows that you're using Morse code, then they can detect exactly what those letters were. So they encrypted them, they basically scrambled what those letters were. So that anyone else getting the message wouldn't be able to tell what that message was. And the Allies, in particular Britain, spent an awful lot of time trying to figure out how to decrypt that message. They got people like Alan Turing working on mathematically how you could solve the decryption of all those messages which they were sending. Alan Turing gets a lot of credit for this. There's someone who doesn't get much credit for this, who I will come back to in a future video, and that is someone called Tommy Flowers. He was the person who designed really one of the greatest inventions that Britain has ever built. And this was something called Colossus. This was a computer designed to decrypt these messages. One of the reasons Tommy Flowers doesn't get an awful lot of credit is because until very recently, his work was classified. He couldn't tell anyone about it. In fact, he had to destroy all the original documents. The work has subsequently been declassified though, and what you're looking at on screen right now is a recreation of the original Colossus computer. I want you to look at the middle of this image. See those things? Those things that are literally central to the very first electronic, digital, programmable computer in the world? Those are Stroger switches. A really important thing for computers to be able to do is to take a single input and choose which one of several outputs it goes to, just like dialing a phone in a phone network. For example, whatever device you're watching this on, the graphics processing unit is sending a separate signal to each individual pixel in the image you're seeing. So that's one graphics processing unit sending a signal to hundreds and hundreds of different pixels. The reverse might be true, where a system needs to take lots of different inputs and convert them to one single input that the computer can use. These processes are known as multiplexing and demultiplexing, and they are central to pretty much all modern computer architecture. Pretty much every device you own which has any sort of processor in it, including most of your wristwatches these days, Pretty much any one of them is going to have some sort of replication of Stroger's original design. Now these days it's done all on chip, and it's known as a multiplexer or a demultiplexer depending on whether it's the one-to-many connection or the many-to-one connection, but it's still doing the same job. It's still serving that same purpose which Stroger figured out and envisioned and then built over a century ago. In 1946, following the end of the Second World War, Britain and the United States signed the UK-USA Agreement. This is an agreement covering the sharing of information between the two allies, and is really the cornerstone of the special relationship between Britain and the United States. In 1986, to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the agreement, the director of GCHQ in the UK sent the director of the NSA in the US this. This is a central component from the original Colossus computer, signifying the importance of all that intelligence gathering, and as you can see, it's a Stroger switch. The UK-USA agreement was only officially acknowledged in 2005, and only publicly disclosed in 2010, so Stroger never really got to see the full extent of his achievements. But it's kind of amazing to think that you're now watching this video using technology which was originally developed back in the 1800s. And that kind of begs a question. Did Stroger end up being one of these inventors who dies penniless and alone and starving? No, 
No, he didn't. And that's one of the best parts of this story. Through selling his patents and his shares in companies who then developed the technology from his patents, he ended up making about $11,000. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but actually converted for inflation, that works out around about $300,000 in today's money. Again, it's not quite a lottery win, but it was more than enough to fund his businesses and to allow him to expand and develop everything that he'd already done. It's said that at the time of his death in May 1902, he owned an entire city block in St. Petersburg, Florida. I've been to St. Petersburg, it's a nice place, great weather. It would have probably been better if he could have managed to wait a little bit longer because a month and a half after his death, the first modern air conditioning system was developed by Willis Carrier. And that's something again for a future video. But even so, owning an entire city block in any American city is usually a pretty good sign. For all his eventual success in life, for me, it's still a little sad that Strojan never lived to see the full potential of his ideas. And for all we know, we still haven't seen the full potential of his ideas. But what we do know is that every day, we use dozens of different devices which rely on the concepts he first had. And although the Stroger switches have now become solid state devices and have become small enough that you wouldn't even be able to see them without a microscope in many cases, they are still basically the same concepts which he thought of. This is why Stroge is a hero of mine. The disgruntled undertaker who had a hunch he should be seeing more dead people and so decided to invent something to solve that problem. Even though he was working in a field of technology he really knew nothing about and in doing so completely revolutionized telecommunications and his influence continues to be felt even today in the devices we use all the time. If you found the story of Armand Stroger interesting, please like and subscribe. You can also check out the other videos on my channel for more like this. Also, if you know of anyone who has had a big influence on history but most people haven't heard of, then please leave a message in the comments below. Until next time, thanks very much for watching.